Hi, welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt. This is the stupidest, most outrageous, but also the most fun thing ever. This is the 2023 Cadillac Escalade V, and it's a square sitting on top of a truck chassis with a fire-snorting 6.2-liter supercharged V8 lurking under the hood. Power, plenty. Sound, deafening. Giggles, compulsory. The concept of big power SUVs isn't exactly new, and this isn't even exactly what you would call the upper echelon if you wanted something like a big power SUV. However, if you wanted a seven passenger ladder frame building that incinerates fuel to the outcome of 700 horsepower, this is kind of the only name in the game. The 6.2 liter supercharged V8 under the hood is the swan song from GM and sucks down fuel at the Greenpeace award winning single digit miles per gallon. However, what it results in is 682 horsepower and 653 pound feet. Sure, power numbers are great, but those massive explosions under the hood are good for something a little bit more than horsepower in zero to 60. It's the symphony of the quad tips you get when you get on it. And when you get off it. <laughs> and when you shift. Speaking of shift, this Escalade comes with a 10 speed automatic that feels more like it belongs in a sports coupe than in a massive truck. The shifts are immediate and sharp and give similar drama to the one that you find in one of my favorite cars, the Lexus LC500. And you all know what a high compliment that is coming from me. Interestingly though, you don't get all of the cracks and pops every single time you lift off the throttle in V mode. And since it doesn't give it to you every single time, it gives you the feeling that you have to work for it or that you've earned it. But when you do get it right, it sounds basically like the Marines are holding weapons training off the back of your bumper. Everything about this car is outrageous in the best way. And as you can imagine, the handling is outrageous too. You've got a ladder frame truck chassis underneath, but you've got four wheel drive, air springs, and magnetic dampers. So the ride sophistication is actually shockingly good. But notice I use the word ride and not handling. And that's because no matter how big those Brembos are up front, no matter how stiff those magnetic shocks get, and no matter how sharp you set the steering, there's no hiding the fact that this thing is over 5,500 pounds and is tall enough to make varsity as a freshman. So it's no surprise that it's big and heavy and doesn't corner like a Cayenne. But get the wheel straight, stand on the throttle, and you won't have a single care in this world. Zero to 60 is rated for 4.4 seconds, but if you really wanted to get closer to four seconds dead for some reason, you could get a pedal commander to get sharper throttle response. But honestly, whether I do zero to 60 in four seconds or eight seconds, as long as it sounds like this, I really don't care. Now with this being the V version, of course, we've talked a lot about what this thing is like behind the wheel, and if you couldn't tell by now, it's a riot. However, under the big engine, the brakes, the V bad, there's still an Escalade. So it still needs to be a luxury bar. So is it? I mean, yeah. The air suspension and mag ride give you so much room to stiffen and soften the ride that you can have such extremes that suit whatever driving you want to do. You can put the exhaust in stealth mode and then you have a nice quiet and refined cabin. And since this thing is shaped like a box, the visibility is fantastic. And all of that plus you get super cruise, or I should say at least you would if the chip shortage wasn't a thing. So wrapping up behind the wheel, the engine is super, super powerful. The exhaust is borderline illegal. The speed is brutal. The shifts are super, super sharp and I love it. The ride can be as soft or as firm as you want. The cabin still swaddles you in luxury and it's as easy and as it is fun to drive. I mean, I know this thing is the poster child for gluttony and excess, but I haven't stopped smiling since they dropped this thing off. I already know that I'm gonna request another one next year just so I can have another go. Let's step outside.
This thing is so stupid, but aren't some of the best things? I mean, you can't go anywhere near the throttle without losing your mind and giggling uncontrollably. And then you stand outside and you look at it and you have a super handsome luxury SUV. You can tell squares, rectangles, and other geometric shapes were the inspiration of this Escalade. But it suits the personality of the vehicle really well. I love it in this red paint, especially with the black accents which come standard with the V. There are a few V-specific details, but the design remains largely like the normal Escalade. The V-specific things include a slightly more aggressive front fascia. You have V-specific wheels with the massive six-piston Brembo brakes peeking out from underneath. You've got a V-badge on your front door on each side. And then on the rear, your Newton meter badge on the lower right of the tailgate is replaced with another V-badge. You've also got a reworked diffuser with the quad tips at the bottom. So they didn't do a lot in terms of styling to make this thing super unique or shouty or in your face. And I kind of like that subtle approach to styling. It's more sleeper, if you could call it that. Of course, that's assuming you don't go anywhere near the throttle. But what you have here is a really handsome truck. And then speaking of truck, this is built on the T1XX ladder frame chassis, which means you get 7,000 pounds of towing. I don't know why you would tow with this thing, but you can. Step inside. And then if the exterior changes weren't subtle enough, you've got an even more subtle interior change. You do get a couple little V things here in your cabin. You have a V button in front of your shifter, but they basically just took the top of the range Escalade and added a couple things here and there. I like that they didn't paint the interior in red and drape it in carbon fiber. There's no need for any more suggestion of sporty performance from the interior. Leave that to the engine and the transmission. What you do have is a very nice and very luxe interior. The seats are something to behold with an interesting stitching pattern. They're heated, they're cooled, they have massage, they have speakers built into the headrest, there's 36 speakers in total. I mean, they do it all. Your dash design, while not different, is still impressive, with the massive curved OLED display for your digital cluster and infotainment system. The systems themselves are brilliant. The resolution's great, the customizability is great, you get wireless CarPlay and a decent 360 camera. The resolution is good, but the lens is a little bit warped. The infotainment is touchscreen, or you can control it with the iDrive style wheel to keep the screen clean. You've got a head-up display, which is nice. You've got a vertical wireless charger, which works. Then overhead, you have a nice big pano roof. The rear seats are kind of skinny jump seats, but they're comfy. Then there's screens on the back of the front seats with HDMI compatibility. You've got chargers, vents, and heated rear seats. Then the third row is decent size, but you can still get the larger ESV longer wheelbase version of this V if you need a touch more room. The ESV will also give you more trunk space, which would be nice, but with all the seats folded down from the trunk, it's super convenient, and it results in a huge and practical square interior storage space. So the interior of this V doesn't change a huge amount, but I didn't really need to. On the other hand, the only interior that gets close to this thing from the States is the Grand Wagoneer, and that doesn't come with the power and theater that you get from this Escalade V. So that might be a good time to wrap this out. So as tested, this thing is about $150,000, making it pretty crazy money. However, it's not nearly as crazy as it would have sounded two years ago. And it's not that crazy when you consider the competition. The Durango Hellcat offers similar power and drama, but doesn't come close to this interior. So then you start looking at things from Europe, like GLS 63s, Alpina XB7s, Cayenne Turbo GTs, Range Rover Sports, all of which are better handlers, but don't offer the same raucousness, the interior space, or I can't believe I'm saying this, the towing. So when you really break it down, the Escalade V does sit in a class of its own. A class we don't need, but in another way, maybe we do sometimes. Thank you Cadillac for letting us have a go in this thing. Now we need to see what this powertrain is like in the CT5 Blackwing. Thanks for watching.